Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, I ask you to hit the no notification bell so you know when I upload a video. This helps us get the gospel of Jesus Christ worldwide. Happy Saturday. Today, I'm excited because I'm starting a new series called Saturday Conversations. I had to start this, this series with fire. I had to start this series with the heavy hitter. So I have a guest that I have known her whole life. If Can y'all please welcome to the conversation, Eve Akinyemi. Eve, what's up? How you doing? Hey. <laughs> what's up? Hi, how are you doing? Good, good. Long time no see. Even though we're, we're siblings, long time no see. <laughs> I mean, but it's the truth. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before we go into the topic, we just um the cop people want to know who who are you? They know that you're my sister. Maybe they might not know. They they might just think we have the same last name. Yeah. But so who are you, Eve? So I am Eve Akiyemi, shortened, I guess. <laughs> it's really Evelyn Akiyemi. Um, some people may know me as Yemi. Um, I I am just a happy hearted individual who loves the Lord. Um, I actually grew up within the church. Both my parents are actually pastors. Yeah. Um, growing up, of course, it's funny because now I guess my perspective on um, the relationship, relationship with God was so different growing up because it's kind of like when your parents are forcing you to go and you're like, I just want to sleep or I just want to stay at home. Like you don't want to go. And now I'm totally the opposite. I'm like, always at church, yeah. always doing anything for church, because I truly believe that, you know, a form of worship and a way of gratitude is to serve the Lord. For sure. So that's why I'm like, I'm like all over the place now, whenever it comes to that. Um, I have two siblings, um, if y'all don't know, of course, Edward, my brother. And then I also have my sister, Mary. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we all grew up in the church, so. Yeah. <laughs> It's funny that you say that because it seems like we were going to church. We had to go to church. But for me, I don't know about you, but for me in college, I like kind of dipped down. I only went to church maybe like on Easter, but I didn't tell my mom and my daddy about it. But I was like, every time they asked me, they were like, oh, how was church? It was a Sunday I went to church. I was like, God was looking out for your boy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have to lie. So I was like, yeah, church was good. So, but then as for you, uh, like you said, when I entered after college, a fire just reunited in me again. And I started serving and doing things that I think when you're younger, you didn't know, but when you get older and then you remember what God brought you through, it's like mm -hmm. an obligation and duty to like, God, you gave me your son and he gave his life. The mm -hmm. least I can do is serve you in any capacity at the local church. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. So even when I was in college, actually, I, I barely went to church, like, because it was hard for me to find a mm -hmm. church. That was yep. it. Cause I went to college in a small little town, Nacogdoches, mm -hmm. Texas. So it was kind of hard to find my, I guess my niche yeah. because it's like, I'm so used to like an intimate, you know, worship setting, you know, mm -hmm. I'm used to being with people that I grew up with. Yeah. The aunties and uncles that have known me since I was a baby. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it was really hard trying to find a church that I could fit into. So I, probably attended like three different churches and mm -hmm. then I stuck with one um after some time because I had a friend um that was going there too so we would go to church together mm -hmm. but it, it, it wasn't the staying still because there would be times that I, I wouldn't go as much because I'm like yeah. oh, let me just watch home church or something <laughs> so you know, yeah you know that's funny the Holy Spirit convicted me one time because I was like my whole excuse like I don't have a car God I don't have a car yeah then the Holy Spirit was like but you can find rice to a party. I was like, uh. <laughs> I was like, holy. I was like, holy spirit. It's like, I don't, oop. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> but like, you, made, you thought, you thought. Then I made this vow with God. I was like, if you give me a car, like the Toyota came, you give me a car, I start going mm -hmm. to church. So, you know, he gave me the car and everything. And I was like, all right. I didn't go the first week. And God said, I thought you said if mm. I gave you a car. And it wasn't me trying to fulfill my my vow. I was like, man, if I don't go to church, he's gonna take this car from me. I might, might not start. So I, ever since that time, I started going to church. So <laughs> you give it, you take it away. <laughs> Let it be the name of the Lord. 
So, yeah, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, I mean, I know. For, thank you for accepting it because I know you have, a, you have a busy schedule. So I really do thank <laughs> you for, for coming on. We, di we discussed it before we got on how busy your schedule yeah. is. <laughs> So, but I do appreciate the invitation. So, um, like I said, I know we're siblings and it wasn't like, oh, you know, let me just bring my sister on. So yeah. I do really appreciate that. No problem at all. So let's get into the topic. The people all right. watching, y'all see the title, y'all see the thumbnail. Um, it's how to function in the middle, how to function in the yeah. middle. Eve, you know what I realized? What? Everyone is in the middle of something. Mm. If you're single, you're in the middle of your season of singleness. If yeah. you're engaged, you're planning a wedding. If you're married, you're trying not to kill your spouse. You got kids, <laughs> you're trying to make sure you don't put them up for adoption. Everybody is in the middle of something. So, ah. <laughs> so even Apostle Paul was in the middle. In Philippians chapter 3, mm. verse 13 and 14 says, no, no, dear brothers, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past. And looking yeah. forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. So, yeah. please, my first question to you is, what does the middle mean to you? Hmm. So, mm, the middle, in a way, in a sense, had me feeling as, in a way, of being stagnant. Okay. Yeah. Like, cause it's like, okay, I'm not moving forward. I'm mm -hmm. not going backward. I'm just there. Yeah. Um, I, well, that was my first thought of the middle, but present Eve now, um, I actually just think of it as being a, a waiting period mm -hmm. and, um, just trusting God and remembering the promises God has, um, told me. And during, the middle, I, I try to just do um, preparation. And it's funny because there's a quote that says, you know, um, you're, you have luck or you're lucky when prepara preparation meets opportunity. But in my head, I'm like, no, if God has told you some things, yeah, you're prepared. Like, yeah, you know, like sure. if he has told you, you're going to travel the world, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Like be prepared yeah. because you don't want that opportunity to come. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a slap in God's face. Like, you know, I told you, and I've been, you know, revealing all these things. There are a lot of people that wish I can tell them so many of these things. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually willing to tell you and you didn't take advantage of it. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want, you know, God to be like, you know, disappointed in me because I didn't take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I, now I look at the middle as being preparation time. That's very good because remember what I was talking about, people in their season of singleness, mm -hmm. people are waiting before they say I do before they start acting like a husband or a wife. Mm -hmm. I think right now when you're single is when you have to act like a husband or wife, especially the yes. men out there. Because if God has called you to be the spiritual leader, you better start praying now. You better start fasting now for your future exactly. family. Because once you have the family, once the kids come, you will. you have to be way more intentional to have a prayer life and to yep. read the scriptures. Because... People are saying, when I get married, I'm when I do this, when I do that. No, do it now, prepare now, and then you'll see the promise. Like, I, I really believe that God will not give you the promise until you show your preparation for the promise. I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, it's so funny how you brought that, um, the husband and wife thing up, because mm -hmm. um, I've, I've actually heard that before. And, you know, I'll hear people say, oh, oh you you're a wife, you're a wife, or, mm -hmm. you know, you're a husband. And I'm just like, they not married. <laughs> but I know it's them talking about um, how they carry themselves, how mm -hmm. they present themselves and, you know, and all that they do and, you know, just their character as well. Yeah. So it's funny how you brought that up because I was like, okay, yeah, I have been hearing that a lot lately. <laughs> yeah. And then so many people aspire to op like open their own business. Mm -hmm. God's looking at you like, you're not working hard and some, uh, someone else's business. So you're not working hard there. Why would I promise you with, you know, with another business? So it's yes. just, And then the middle, like you said, is preparation, is development. Because there's no promise without preparation. There's no yes. destiny without development. So you have to keep on developing and pre preparing because the, God doesn't want the promise to destroy us. 
Yeah. Because there's a lot of things that we prepare is like we have to prepare our character. Because mm. if the light hits our character, we can just erode and like we just let the we get lost in the sauce, as people say. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes we got to teach ourselves doing the middle how to be humble. How yeah. to always point and give the glory to God and not take in the glory for us, you know? Yes. Took the words right out of my mouth, sir. <laughs> so the second question is, I think everybody's going to like this one. How do you remain hopeful in the middle? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how do you remain hopeful in the middle? I feel like uh, me personally, I, I go back and forth with this. Like, I'm like, yeah, God's got it. All right. And then I'm like, all right, Lord. <laughs> Um, I'm knocking up there like, hey, you there, Lord? You there? <laughs> but, um, you know, for me, I have to constantly, uh, I know one of the verses that I always, um, I like to look back at is um, Jeremiah 29, 11, mm -hmm. where it says, uh, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Mm -hmm. um, I know, um that God has great things destined for me. Yeah. And um, I try to remind myself with that scripture not to be weary or, you know, or to worry about anything because, you know, God is good. Like God is a good God. He's not going to do anything to harm us. Like he wants to, and it goes back to question one, like he, he wants us to be prepared mm -hmm. for this big I, w I don't want to say burden. I want to say another B word, which is blessing. Yeah. This big blessing that he's about to bestow on us. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I I try to think about that scripture as well as um, I have um, a lot of people, and you're one of them, of course, um, a lot of friends as well as family members that encourage me and let me know like, okay, it's going to be good. So if you want to be hopeful in the middle have those people that are there to encourage you and let you know like okay yeah it didn't work out this time or it didn't work out this way but let's use another system or you know it's, it's just not your year yeah. but don't give up on the dream just keep pressing on just keep pressing on and then you know it always reminds me of the story of joseph like yeah. he was a young age when the lord revealed hey you're going to be ruling over Egypt, you know? Yeah. And so, and at times I feel like when God lays promises on our hearts, we forget that it's not, at times it's not going to be on our time frame. Yeah, like, sure. and, and we think like, oh, okay, you know, I'm going for this. I'm striving for this. Yeah. And it's going to happen this way. Like I, I, I feel like I, I, not, I feel like I planned my whole life out. Like mm -hmm. I was like, all right. I'm going to be married at this time. I'm going to have kids at this time. I'm going to, like, I, everything. And it's funny because God is just laughing like, <laughs> oh, like, you don't know what I got in store for you. Yeah. But yeah, so having those people that will encourage you and, you know, always go back to scriptures because, you know, the scriptures never lie yeah. at all. Like, and, and they, they are a true encourager as well as God just being able to comfort and, um, with the scriptures, they reassure you that God is going to do it. Like no yeah. matter what you're going through right now, like God is going to do it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, people, other people's testimonies that I see, I'm just like, oh, I'm fired up. Like, yeah, I tap into that. It's going to yeah. happen too to me. Like, yeah. you know, and then genuinely being happy, like, like saying congratulations. Cause you know, Hey, your time's coming but also another big thing you know I like to sing I'm in my church choir <laughs> and um what, what, another what are big you thing. are you like a soprano tenor alto I am an alto oh, all the way oh, alto, alto pride, pride. <laughs> alto <laughs> pride. <I'm> an alto. <laughs> but yeah so uh but um music also helps me a lot okay um, because at times when you, you don't, you don't want to talk to anybody when mm -hmm. you, you don't want to look at a scripture or anything. You just want to hear the, the, the lyrics and the songs. Mm -hmm. And, um, that, that is a big portion of, um, encour encouragement for mm -hmm. me. And, um, I, I'm like, listen, I got a lit gospel slash CCM playlist. So, <laughs> 
So whenever I feel it some type of way, I'm yeah. like, all right, let me get that playlist. Let me start playing it right now. So, um, but that's another way of staying hopeful. Okay, so what what is your top three songs right now? Like your top three go to songs that, man, if I'm in a rut, I'm gonna listen to the songs. Don't get me out this rut. I'm gonna remember, and I can say that I'm gonna be hopeful in the middle. Top three songs. Hmm. And it could be like so, songs now or back in the day. What? Okay, so I have number one on the list is "Undefeated Champion" by Bethel Music. Okay. Yeah, that that hey. really get me. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other one is, hmm, this is a great question because now it's so funny because I listen to all these songs and now I'm like, wait, which one? <laughs> Um, so, you're a singer, I, so you probably have like a whole bunch that's tied for first, tied for second, tied for third. <laughs> listen, um, The Blessing by Elevation. That was really good. And, hmm. Ooh, man. I'm really trying to think. Uh, I would say, uh, Nathaniel Bassey, uh, You Are God. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a whole bunch of little mix of everything, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I listen to everything, so. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, listen, there's no prejudice towards you know, one genre. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good, yeah, especially you being a singer. Yeah. <laughs> But see, this question really reminds me of what my mommy always says. We have the same mom. We just say my mom we're real possessive in our family. I know we <laughs> are. My mother. <laughs> it might be an African thing. But <laughs> my mommy always says, like, if you have life, you have hope. Yeah. So when you wake up another morning, you have hope. Like mm-hmm. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 21, 23 says, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Yes. So for me, I think like how I can remain, remain hopeful in the middle is just like God's faithful. Like you said, God is faithful. Yes. Like, God is faithful. Even when we were faithless and we we're ratchet and we we're acting doing our own thing. Come on now. God said, you know what? I'm still going to, I'm still going to save you. I'm still going to choose you. I'm still going to appoint you. And it's crazy how like God can take Messed up people like me and you. I get to talk about me. I don't know about you, but messed up people like me. Me too. So, me too. <laughs> and he's all like, you know what? I'm still going to choose. I'm just going to use your story as a testament to bring people to the kingdom. So I'm just okay. amazed at every day of God's faithfulness and his grace towards us. So that's a great way to answer the question, Eve. So third question, you want to add anything to the same question or are we good? No, that was, that was pretty much it. <laughs> right. Third question is, how do you remain grateful in the middle? Hmm. How do you remain grateful? There's one thing to be hopeful, but there's nothing to be grateful. So how, yeah. do, how would you remain grateful in the middle? Oof. Yeah, that's a good one. So within my short, young, look, young years of 28 years yeah. on this <laughs> earth, <laughs> young 28 years <laughs> on this earth, um, I've seen a lot of, miraculous things that mm-hmm. God has done in my life that um whenever whenever anything is going on I'm like you know what God you did this for me you did this for me yeah you did that for me like it's so, there's so many and it's crazy and it's like crazy miracles that people are like what that happened yeah and 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 it's kind of like it can only be God. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So whenever I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling any type of way, I'm like, you know what, God? And it's so funny because before I would get to the point like, God, like, why isn't this working out? Or why isn't that working out? And then I'll be like, well, I'm thankful for life. Now I've gotten to the point that I'm like, you know what, God, if you don't do nothing else. Now, this is a big point for somebody to get to. Come on, come on. I said, if you don't do anything else, come on, Eve. I have enough to worship you. Yeah. Because you've done so many great things that it's like my mouth cannot be closed, not at all. Because, like, and it's so hard to explain. When you have, 
I don't know like how to explain it. Like when God has comforted you, mm-hmm. like through heartbreak, your like tears, like bad, like ugly crying, like all of that. Yeah. It's like, God, why would I not worship you? Yeah. Even even though I'm going through this, I know that at the end of the day that you're still good. Mm-hmm. I know that, you know, through everything that happened in the past, you were there with me. So even though this extra stuff is happening, you know, I'm still going to praise you. I'm still mm-hmm. going to worship you because I have enough to still be grateful for what you have done. Like... <laughs> I'm telling you, like I was saying, like with the heartbreaks and especially traumas with yeah. different traumas that have happened in my life. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just like God was there comforting me like how no other human being can. Yeah. So it's 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 like, listen, I'm grateful. And it's <laughs> and that's one of the things that people always ask me. They're like, how, how are you always so happy all the time? How are you always smiling all the time? I'm like, I'm alive. Like. Yeah. Not only that, I've been through some stuff and God has brought me through it. Like, yeah. so it's like, I look at the middle, like this too shall pass. This too yeah. shall pass. For real though, because if you look at the, the, the Israelites, the reason why they never made it to the promised land, because they weren't grateful. They say, God, we're thirsty. God gave them water. They said, God, we're hungry. God gave them manna. We want meat. Then God gave them quail. They were never grateful. So I think it's very important that you be grateful in your middle, because if not, God might keep you in that middle till you give, get a grateful heart. So yeah. like First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So being grateful, as you said, like, I woke up, I can breathe, I can walk, I can talk, I can see, I can hear, I can smell. It's stuff that we take for granted, and we won't know until it's taken from us that we have to be grateful for right now and I'm- yeah and with that um with what you said mm-hmm. with the whole um how how I was saying I'm grateful to be alive I'm yeah. like that's so much more important than I don't want to say failed plans but delayed plans yeah for sure that's so much more important mm-hmm. like hey I go back to our mother when she said you have life you have hope yes if you can get up out of that bed you have hope like yes. And even if you die, God, God raised, raised, resurrected Jesus after three days. Listen. Jesus resurrected Lazarus after four days. So as long as, how about this? As long <laughs> as you have God, you have hope. Because it's not about life. <laughs> if you have God, you have hope. That's yeah. And I, and I appreciate our mother. Yeah. For, sure. You know, always pressing that into our heads. Like, yeah. hey, you have, you alive, right? Yeah. Okay, then you have hope. You can continue to keep going on. Yeah. And I always want to pause and say this. People, do not stop in the middle. Mm. Do not stop. It's going to be a question coming on, but do not stop in the middle. I'm going to let Eve tackle that question. So let's move on, all right? But do not stop in the middle. So question number four is, how do you resist the temptation of comparing in the middle? Because you see... You see your your mates, your friends getting up there. You're like, God, God how, how she got a boyfriend? She used to be a not a wholesome girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got cute, family friendly. <laughs> wholesome, not wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she was she was not holy. You know, but so <laughs> how do you how do you uh, how do you resist the temptation of comparing yourself to other people in the middle? So. Um... I always try to remind myself that your lane is not someone else's lane. That's good. That's really good. Because the calling on one's life Mm -hmm. is different from the calling on someone else's life. For sure. So to try to compare yourself to another person's standards is not going to work out at all. Because... Um, I think about, I'm going to go to scripture right quick. Um, Romans 12, uh, verse 6. And it says, um, New Living Translation. (laughs) Um, It says, 
Huh? I say it's a great translation. <laughs> it said, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you a leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tightly to what is good. And that was actually six to nine, sorry. <laughs> but I feel like within that scripture, Paul is literally, he hit it on the nail. Like, don't compare yourself. If somebody is able to prophesy, but you're able to dream, yeah. don't compare yourself to that person's standards because yeah. it's totally in another different lane. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, it's these requirements or these standards that God has already placed for us, just for us, like, especially made for us. And you're over here trying to compare it to Sister Susie or, you know, Brother Billy. You know, and it's like, you're not supposed to, because at the end of the day, we were uniquely made. We're, we don't all have the same DNA. We're yeah. not, we weren't all, we don't all have the same head on our heads. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, so that's why I, I always remind myself of that scripture. And I always think to myself, like, no, you're totally different. So you shouldn't compare yourself to, you know, how far so-and-so has gone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I also get into the mentality of, you know what, Lord, let your will be done. Like, just give me, I, I have to pray for strength as well, because I mean, we're human beings. Sometimes we do compare ourselves and we're like, oh my God, like so-and-so has, you know, whatever. But then you got to bring it back bring it back and be like, oh, wait, I'm starting to compare. Yeah. So let me say a prayer. Let me ask God to give me strength to be able to, um, to be able to get through this because it, it is, it is a weird period, especially when people are just kind of looking at you kind of like, oh, so when's your time coming or what, what's going on with you? Mm -hmm. But you have to just be, um, very grateful. Like, that you're in that season before I, it's so funny because when I was in my uh particular season I I was just like what is this what God mm, like you know but then I was like <laughs> but now it's so funny because when I talk about it to people I'm like I am so grateful like I was like I like and people are just like you're grateful like what and I was just like yeah I'm grateful because God has really changed my perspective and mm -hmm. had me see things from a different standpoint yeah. and um you know with anybody that's like uh currently going through this just quote scripture like i understand that that sounds like the churchy answer but literally scripture quoting it and saying it out loud it really does help like yeah. it it truly does and if it don't look come back to me come back to me because I guarantee you it will help and then like I said before asking God for strength yeah. and having him like just kind of change your perspective and your mindset like okay you know what Lord obviously you wanted me to prepare more obviously you wanted me to you know do all this thing so you know that person got it I'm happy for them because at the end of the day as I'm celebrating with them they gonna celebrate with me for sure. yeah Pastor Eve with a whole word I got nothing else to say <laughs> <laughs> he came and dropped the mic. I told you this is going to be fire. I told you I brought in the heavy hitter right here. I'm so <laughs> dead. She may be the youngest in the family, but she's the fiercest too. I'll tell you that. She's a little spiritual warrior over there. <laughs> Master E dropping the oh mic. Oh my goodness. Goodness. Wow. Dang, I have nothing. I, you can, I have nothing else. You can <laughs> you, you hit it on the, on the head. So you got nothing else. Listen, to just <laughs> let just let God's will be done. Whoever's yeah. listening to this video, just in your prayers, don't say, "Oh Lord, I want I want so what so and so has, or I want this." You know, because you know God may want to do something greater than mm -hmm. so and so for you. Yeah. So uh, just just pray that God's will will be done yeah. in your life, and you know it will surely come to pass. But we have to get into the attitude of being patient. 
even though we hate that p word we're like patience we're like oh no uh, uh, uh. i already have my timeline like this gotta happen by this time this gotta happen by that time but it's like no like trust me you will be grateful for the patience if you really saw all the great things that god has planned for you i have a question for you because you brought up the timeline do you think comparing is so high because we have our timeline like by 23 i'm married 25 i'm popping out the first baby 27 i'm popping out the second baby 30 the third baby now i'm getting my two times. <laughs> that's the biggest for me like do we think do you think that comparison is so high because we have this timeline and i you, you put so, in the timeline with the the social media too <laughs> so. yeah so i think it's it's a mixture like mm -hmm. it's like the timeline from your parents or your your oh your, that's a good one your family members yeah um it's your timeline because we're like we have it set we're like no I gotta have this by this mm -hmm. I gotta have this by that and then also you you start to see things on social media where you're starting to compare and you're like oh my god so and so was 27 or 28 and they've gotten this you know, down and they've already completed this. Like, you know, I need to complete mine too. I'm, I'm 25 right now. So that, that means I need to complete it, but I'm 28 too. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, it, it's most likely not going to work like that yeah. at times because, you know, like I said, God has already orchestrated so many plans in our lives mm -hmm. that he's like, no, it's going to happen at this time because this is the time that it's going to come into fulfillment that it's going to be greater yeah. and so at times like I said it's like a mixture of all of those and we have to stop looking at the standards and the pressures of society as well as family members like I am yeah. listen I my brother knows I am the type of person that tell my parents like like no, <laughs> like it's not the time, <laughs> like because it's it's but they they don't even pressure me. It's really my parents that ask me once and that's it, but it's really other people that'll ask me certain mm -hmm. things and I'm like, no. <laughs> like, so it's it, and and the reason why I can say it so confidently because it's like I have already had this conversation with God. Yeah. So it's like he already said, you know, don't worry about that right now. When it's time, I'll let you know. Yeah. So that's why we have to seek God's counsel and also pray for the people that are pressuring us and be like, God, they, for they know not what they're doing. <laughs> Lord, I, I pray for them because at the end of the day, you told me to do this and you mm -hmm. told me to also, you know, wait for this. So Lord, put that on their heart where yeah. they're like, oh, you know, let's leave so-and-so alone because, yeah. you know you know, maybe it's not their time yet. Cause I feel like everybody has an appointed time mm -hmm. for some, like the plans that God has for them, but it's on their, well, it's on God's appointed time for their life. Yeah, for sure. When you, when you were talking, what reminded me is um, something our mother always says. So our mom is getting a <laughs> shout out today. That's a good quote. So, okay. This, this is, uh, this is My daddy got quotes too, but it's, it's in this. <laughs> this first one is sponsored by our mother. She's going to hit us with the PayPal. But, uh, <laughs> but she, you know what she always said, like, not everything that glitters is gold. Yeah. Because you're always trying to compare, like, well, I want this, I want that. But, for example, this is an extreme example. You're like, I want that relationship, but you don't know that relationship is abusive. Listen. Like, Listen. Oh, I, I want that, I want that um, thing, but you don't know that thing is attached to depression. So it's not good to always compare in the middle, because maybe God's trying to keep you from some things in the middle. Exactly. So that's and it's so like funny how you though. said that. Go ahead, go because ahead. Because I was gonna say it's so funny how you said that because I was I was thinking that because I was like it was just the other day. It was just funny. I I was like you know what? It's just like my mama said, everything that glitters isn't gold, and 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 it's totally true because you'll see that relationship and then all this secrets or stuff start pouring out mm -hmm. or you see that you know that career that person is in and they start telling you all this different stuff even mm -hmm. though. They're posting on Instagram and they're happy as ever, yeah. you know, about that career or that relationship or whatever the case may be. And later on, they're just kind of like, this is not it. And yeah. it's like, what? This whole time I've been using you as a point of contact. <laughs> like, please, Lord, let my career be like so-and-so. Or please, Lord, let my relationship be like so-and-so. So, hey. <laughs> 
Like, and the fact that it's like, oh no, like, go ahead, reverse that prayer. <laughs> yeah. You know what oh, I yeah. what I really remember the uh, question we asked how to be grateful in the middle. We we had to be grateful that God does not answer all our prayers. Yeah. Because some of the prayers is going to straight take us out. So I'm grateful that Listen. God, <laughs> thank you for Listen. saving me from me. <laughs> <laughs> because it is so funny because at times we get mad and we're like, man, Lord, I told you I want a relationship like so-and-so. And then it comes out and you're like, I just thank you, Jesus, <laughs> for I didn't know what I was saying, Lord. I thank you for not answering that prayer. Like, You're like, forgive me for my naiveness. Listen. <laughs> so, yeah, we thank God for those unanswered prayers. For real. For that real. Those prayers that kept us from danger. Oof. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had those stories like, thank God my phone went dead when it went dead because it was not for God who was on our side. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. But let's go on so I don't tell myself too much. So the fifth question is, <laughs> how do you resist the temptation of complacency in the middle? So um, in my last YouTube video, I'll talk about how to conquer complacency. And then when I talked about how some people will mix up complacency with content, mm-hmm. like I'm content, but the difference between complacency and contentment is contentment, you're not rushing God to go to the next season. But complacency is like, I'm going to stay in the season. I'm comfortable in the season, even though God mm, is asking me to go deeper. Comfortability. Yeah. And what I said was complacency would keep a lot of people from their destiny. Hmm. So how do you resist the temptation? Like, I already got, I already, I'm in the middle. I like the middle. I built a house in the middle. I have some kids in the middle. And God's like, need <laughs> to come deeper. You know what I mean? It's like, what, yeah. where God told us, like, this camp out at, we start building a mansion back. Hmm. So how do we resist the temptation of complacency in the middle? So I know for me, um, it's good to have accountability partners. Oh, that's good. That's real good. Yeah. Because, you know, I, and it's so funny because I feel like this is Loki speaking to my situation now (laughs) because um, I, you know, I work at this, you know, this job. And (laughs) at times I'm like, you know what, I could see myself here for two or three more years, like, you know, and I started thinking about it, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, God, and then, <laughs> and so then, you know, I'll talk to my brother, and no, I'm laughing because the number one person that pushes me is my father, like, yeah. he, like, when I tell you, every time I get on the phone, he's like, so what's going on with this, so what are you doing with this, oh, did you do this, did you, and I'm just like, oh my God, like, Let's can you stop? Let's like it is so funny. Eve, let me project real quick. We have the same mother and same father. I don't want y'all to think like, are they half brothers? <laughs> no. We have the same mother and the same father. It's just in our household, we're real we possessive. Are possessive. So we say my mommy and my daddy. But to clear it all up, we got the same parents. You can continue, Eve. I just I thought I should let. Yeah, them. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We like to do that. Even my sister. It's all three of us. We like to say my mommy, my daddy. Like my, my mommy calling you, my daddy calling you type thing. Because that's just, I don't know, but we're very possessive <laughs> over our parents. That's, that's how it is. You don't ever say mommy household. and your daddy. It, I don't know why, but yeah. <laughs> but our father, <laughs> <laughs> um, he he is always like, you know, why, you need to do this. You need to do that. Oh, also look at this. And, that. and you know, it's so funny because at times I'm like annoyed by it, but I need it. Yeah. Yeah. I need the push because I've gotten to the point where I'm just kind of like, I don't feel like doing this no more, Jesus. Like, you know, and I'm just kind of like, like there are my on and up. There's always, there's more good days where I'm encouraged. And then there's those bad days that like to creep up on you. Oh, and yeah. you're just kind of like, you know what, whatever. But I, I, I'm so thankful to, to my, like to my father because he always pushes me. And I mean, with anything that I did, or yeah, with anything that I did in the past and even now, he's always supportive and pushing me like, okay, let's do this. Okay, let's go by this plan. Okay, this plan didn't work. Okay, let's go here. And I'm just like, daddy, like I told you when I was going to do this or daddy, I just, but him, I'm actually very thankful that he's pushing me mm-hmm. because it's, it's like, I feel like if I don't have anybody pushing me, I won't do it myself. Or even if, 
maybe, which is bad. I was about to say, even if the Holy Spirit is like, told me, okay, now something's going, I'm like, mm, I don't feel comfortable. So uh, I think I'm just going to stay here and, you know, just write it out. Yeah. But, you know, God will set certain people in your life. And of course, my brother Edward is one of them. Um, but it's, it's great to have accountability partners because, you know, and they'll hit you with your deadline and be like, well, you said you're going to do this by this time. Yeah. So what's going on right now? And, and then you're just kind of like, oh, dang. But, and like I said, the Holy Spirit will remind you like constantly, like you can try to ignore. Yeah. Like when you're awake, but when you sleep, he's like, the Holy Spirit gonna send you something. He said, "Free you, game." Listen, even if you ignore the dream, somebody else gonna come to you and say, "Hey, <laughs> the Holy Spirit wants me to tell you this," and it's just like, really? now you bring other people in it. <laughs> but yeah, so big on accountability partners, mm -hmm. and um, also writing goals down yourself. And going back to it constantly yeah. and being like, all right, I haven't completed this. And, you know, once you completed one, check it. And then, you know, go all through the, the list that you have and, you know, give, give yourself a, a deadline too and be mm -hmm. like, all right, so by this so-and-so date, I want this to be accomplished. I want, whether it's like you writing a book or, you know, you trying to go to school or whatever the case may be, give yourself a deadline mm -hmm. because literally the saying is true. When I was younger, my mom used to always say, time waits for no man. And I would just always be like, what you talking about? Mama? Or she'll say, there's not a, 24 hours is not enough in a day and when she would say that all the time I never understood it because I was like I feel like 24 hours is enough I don't know what you're talking about mama and then I got older and I was like oh wow Did like <laughs> 24 hours really isn't enough and I was joking with a friend one time and I was like girl I wish we had 48 hours in a day she's like mm -mm, because that's how we work is gonna bleed over too she was like mm -mm. but I said you right girl you right so I said 24 hours is just enough we just have to manage it well yeah in order to meet those deadlines that's so good especially writing the vision down Habakkuk 2 verse 4 says write the vision down make it plain write it down on tablets and it's crazy how we have all these iPads now. What do they call it? They call it tablets. Tablets. Mm -hmm. so maybe you can like write it down, take a picture of it. Go ahead, go to your notes. If you got, well, if you an uh, iPhone user, I don't know if any Android users. If y'all unsafe people have Androids, we're gonna pray for your salvation. <laughs> <conversation>, okay. <laughs> so yeah, but I know an iPhone. I don't know about Androids, <laughs> but an iPhone, their notes, so you can actually put different, you know, goals or. You know, there, there's so many things. Like mm -hmm. you can you can actually use a physical journal. Yeah. So, so some people still like to write. Like I like to actually write. Mm -hmm. I mean, I use my notes a lot, yeah. but I actually like to write in my journal too. Good. Yeah, because like I said, complacency is a dangerous thing. And what I realized is God is not trying to increase our comfort level in the middle. He's trying to increase our capacity level mm -hmm. in the middle. Because he's all like, okay, I'm taking you here. But I need to increase your capacity. If you look at um, Moses when he was in the wilderness before he went to go um, get the uh, Israelite from the uh, Egypt, mm -hmm. put him in the um, wilderness for 40 years. So he increased his capacity so he can lead two, 2 million people outside of Egypt. You know what I mean? So sometimes the middle is not to increase your comfort level. It's never meant to increase your comfort level. It's, it's always meant to increase your capacity level so you can actually step into the purpose God has created you for. So, Say that, sir. Say that. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so this is our last question. Unless Eve is going to drop some knowledge on us. But this is our last question. And this is a question I bet you everybody wants to know the answer to. What are some ways you remain faithful to God? In the middle. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I know um, for me, because usually, of course, I'm going to always go back to what I've personally done. Um, for me, working for God with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Like, 
some people know this, some people don't, but I'm like in five or six different departments of my church. <laughs> and I, I, I t- actually, I, I take joy in it yeah. because I, I think about, like I said earlier, I think about all the things that God has done for me. And, and I try, and I try not to get it to a standpoint for just only think about what he's done, but actually who God is. Yeah. Like, you know, how he's a healer. He's a protector. Mm-hmm. He's a provider, you know? So, and I was like, that's enough. Like to be able to just be like, okay, you know what? I'm about to go do this. I'm about to go uh, get in this department. Also this department, because it's like, I want to, I, I really want to give God my all. I, yeah. I don't want to, you know, just be give half of myself to God. I want to be able to give him my all. And I feel like being in, involved in, and it's, it's not only service within church, but you know, service, you know, whether it's you going to a food bank or, you know, you helping out with uh, at a local shelter or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. And, you know, just praying for them or just being with them, because at the end of the day, they're seeing God through you. Yeah. So um, but for me, remaining faithful in the middle, um, I I I just try to serve God with all my heart mm-hmm. because I'm like, you know what, God, mm, because of who you are, I will, I will proclaim and I will declare how great you are mm-hmm. and I will just continue to worship you. Yeah. So but if you do attend a church, get involved. <laughs> get involved, join a life group, give. Um, yes. All that stuff will help you. And then once you get yourself around community, they can help you navigate your middle. So yes. that's the most important thing because I always say like the devil doesn't the devil never attacks a group he always attacks an individual. Mm-hmm. That's why on first Peter um, Peter says the the devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour not some people. So the devil loves the isolated Christian. So get involved in your church if you're still online. Try to get involved online through that and they will help you navigate through the middle. So this is seventh question. It just came to my mind. It's just, it can be a little quick snippet, whatever you want to say. is like, so we talked about how to be grateful. We talked about how to remain faithful. We talked about um, what the middle means and how to stay hopeful. My question to you is, my last question, how do you not give up in the middle? Ooh. Like, how do you not give up? Because I know every day the temptation is there to give up. Like, why you keep doing this? What's the point of you doing it? So how do you not give up in the middle? It's it's funny because I feel like God helps me not to give up in regards to, um, like, promises that he's told me. And maybe, mm-hmm. you know, I just put it in the back burner and I'm just like, all right, let me just go, just go through the motions. Let me just yeah. go through my day. Let me just do it. And it's so funny because later on, you'll be like, it's months later. But how, um, you said, how do I, how how do, how do you not give up in the middle? Yeah. So uh, how I don't give up is, um, the Lord, like how he, it's funny because I'm a dreamer. So the Lord will just send me dreams. Like when I feel like I'm on the verge of giving up and I'm just like, you know what, Lord, maybe this is not it. Like maybe I should just move somewhere or maybe I should just do something else because this is not it God will show me dreams of Mm -hmm. you know the future of things that he's told me before but I've I've just kind of let go of it and I just Mm kind of just put it to the side like you know okay if it happens it happens type thing but literally like I said it's God because he'll give me glimpses or he'll tell people to come to me uh about stuff and they'll just start saying you know you know don't give up and da 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 and i'm just like <laughs> looking at them like wait wait a minute <laughs> and then you are i already know it's it's a god intervention because i'm like only you know i'm going through this god like nobody else knows i'm going through it so for you to care that much to send somebody else to yeah. come and tell me not to give up obviously there's something glorious at the end mm-hmm. of the journey so sure. I'm just going to keep pushing on and keep believing in what you said. And like I said, with that writing things down, yeah. I feel like it's really good for the, the promises that God has given you for you to write it down and, con- and consistently say it over and over. And because years down the line, it'll, it'll manifest. And because mm-hmm. I, I, I really 
believe that when you put things in the atmosphere, <laughs> the Lord will do it. Okay. And yeah. so I, I, I feel like it, it, it's really important for you to do, dot it down mm -hmm. and start, whether it's daily affirmations, like, Lord, I will be a millionaire or, mm -hmm. you know, Lord, I, I, I will be successful in this career or mm -hmm. whatever it is that that's your aspiration. You know, even though you're in the middle, write it down and say it and be mm -hmm. like, I will, I will, I will. Or even you can actually say I am, you know, because it, it, it happened in the, in the spiritual, but you now you're just waiting for it in the spiritual. That's I mean, good. in the physical. That's so, good. you know, just say, I am a millionaire. I am this. I am that, you know, because I'm telling you, it, it'll, it'll definitely happen. It'll definitely manifest. Yeah, something that the affirmation is something you have to say is like, I am a generational curse breaker. Because mm. a lot of people are walking under generational curses. But they don't you, know it. Yeah, but you say that affirmation that I am a generational curse breaker, that mm -hmm. all this stuff in my family ends with me, it would not get passed down to my children or my children's children. That's the thing that you're going to see that God has, has called you. Even though you're in the middle, God has called you to change the trajectory of your last name. So that's very important also. And yeah. In Galatians 6 verse 9, it says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we'll reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up mm. so you can't you can't give up in the middle if you give yep. up in the middle you won't reap the harvest of blessings so i know yeah. it may be hard i know it may be difficult i know maybe your friends giving up i know your family members telling you should move on but listen like like you said listen to the voice of the lord and keep on going because at the end of the day when you go up to heaven you're going to be standing in front of jesus and jesus is like you should have done this, but you gave up. Your father's not going to be there. Your mother's not going to be there. Your siblings, your friends making fun of you now, they're not going to be there. But Jesus will be there. And I want I want you to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. So yes. please, 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 I implore you, do not give up in the middle. Yes, yes, yes. Eve, anything else? Because this was, uh, you should have charged me for this. This was, this was <laughs> gold right here. This is good. I, I, I don't know how I'll make it up to you, but hey, this was really good. I, it's I okay. Well, I guess since, you know, you, you are my younger sister, so I, I probably paid paid down the line. I already paid for it in the past. So Yeah. <laughs> but even uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for giving us practical wisdom and how to navigate the middle. This was so beneficial. I'm going to have I'm going to have to have you on next time but i don't know you might charge me next time so i might have to <laughs> you know, negotiate something you know i might you know buy you some mcdonald's or something i don't know McDonald's. <laughs> you, you're right you're right water burger you're right you're right I'm so dead. <laughs> some people are like what is water burger is it is a southern thing you gotta yes, go, you gotta go take it for it. <laughs> so before we end episode one the saturday conversations we want to get to know you a little bit better eve a game called this or that okay i'm gonna give you two options you choose one and at the end because i made my guesses so at the end i'm going to share how many i got right with yours all right so whenever all right. let me know you're ready okay um i'm ready <laughs> right. ruth or esther esther okay movies or dinner dinner okay waking up early or staying up late Oof. Staying up late. Okay. L.A. or Miami? Mm. <laughs> now that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go with Miami. Okay. And um, route to travel, airplane or road trip? Airplane. I know you. I got four out of five right. I got... <laughs> I said, my sister likes food. So I said, dinner. I was like, my sister don't really like to wake up early. So she got there <laughs> late. Miami, I was guessing. If I have to wake up early, I'll wake up early. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I, I mean, I say you don't. I mean, I say you don't. <laughs> I say Miami. I was like, Miami has good vibes. LA is probably expensive. So I said, let's go to Miami, you know, keep the budget. I said, I don't know if my sister's patient enough for road trips. So I was like, let's just do airplane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I was surprised yeah. about the Esther, though. I thought you liked the whole Ruth and Boaz story, but Esther, okay. I Why really do you like think Esther. Esther? <laughs> do what? 
I said, I, I really had to go with Esther. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you once again. Before we end, Eve, do you mind praying for us? Praying for people who's going to watch this who are in their middle right now. Pray that they get encouragement and strength and then that God will just be with them and see them through their middle. Yes. All right. All right, let's bow our heads. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, we just come to you today just to glorify you, God. We thank you, O oh Lord, for what people may think is negative, which is the middle, but we look at it as a positive thing, God, because we know that you're only trying to shape us, O oh Lord, into the individuals that we are meant to be and for the works that we are meant to do for you on this earth. I pray for those that are going through any type of situation in terms of being in the middle, Lord, that you will comfort them, that you will be with them, Lord, and let them know that your promises are true, that your word never goes void. I pray that you would encourage them and let them know, Lord, that you were still seated high upon the throne. And as you have said it, Lord, you will surely do it. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will send them those encouragers, oh Lord, that will that will give them encouragement of continue to go on and to never give up. We thank you, Lord, and I pray that you also strengthen them during this time. We just thank you for this wonderful conversation that we've had, oh Lord. We pray that many people are touched by it. All glory forever be unto your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Pastor Eve came through. <laughs> so, uh, hey, you are this pastor title. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you're a pastor, but I'm ordaining you now as pastor. If it's a sin, God forgive me, but you're a pastor. <laughs> so thank you for tuning in for episode one of Saturday Conversation. So, so what we want to do is every Saturday at 6 p.m., this video is going to drop. Special thank you to Eve, or let me say your full name, Evelyn Oluwayemi Akiyemi. <laughs> oh, my government, my government. <laughs> you want to throw it in Deborah, you can throw that in, too. Um, just, hey, my mama gave me that name, too, so. <laughs> I just want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Like I said, before we got on this conversation, you talked how busy you were, how you only sleep <sighs> like, two hours a night and, and all this other stuff. So I'm just so proud of the woman you are, the woman of God you are. I'm so proud of the woman you're becoming. Um, like I said, in the intro, you didn't hear the intro, but I said, I've known you your whole life, which is not a lie. It's true. <laughs> so I love how I can, I saw you progress to what you are now. And I just know that you're not, you're not finished yet. I know God is starting with you and you're going to touch millions of souls for the kingdom of God. So my mm -hmm. prayer to you, Evelyn, is that God will give you the desires of your heart. I pray that God will mm -hmm. bless you and keep you, that he will cause his face to shine upon you and give you his shalom peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Evelyn, Evelyn, Thank Evelyn. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My little sister has grown all up, guys. <laughs> Everyone, join the conversation in the comment section. Or talk about what stood out to you. Share it with your friends. Share it with your families. And you can probably say like, oh, you see, he said this, so leave me alone, dad. I don't need to be on your timeline. <laughs> say it respectfully because the Bible does say honor your mother and your father. So if you have any prayer requests, put it in the comment section below. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you next time.